Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, ready to get back to the Union campaign in Ultimate General Civil War. I'm very curious to play through this now that the game is in full release. We're on version 1.04 of Ultimate General Civil War. I'm playing on Brigadier General Difficulty. I will go back and do one more of 50th episode for the Confederate campaign just because I had some requests to kind of go through and show you what the different units did throughout the war in terms of their performance. So I'm going to do one of those just for those of you who might be curious about such things. I'll do that in the next couple days sometime. I want to give a shout out to uh, Meadowhawk509 who is one of the official sponsors of this channel. Thank you so much for your support and I appreciate that a great deal. Um, if you are someone who has really enjoyed the videos that I've done and you want to see more or you have specific requests or you just want to get more involved, you can click on the link below to the Patreon page. Check out some of the different perks to becoming one of the regular supporters of this channel. Uh, one that three people have taken advantage of so far is uh, being able to uh, name one of the brigades. And so if you'd like to be able to name one of these brigades uh, in this current campaign, in any future campaign, check that out if you become uh, that level of a sponsor. I think it's $10 a month uh, to be able to do that. Uh, I greatly uh, appreciate that. And uh, as long as it's you know family friendly, I don't really care much what you want to name it. I will do it. So um, one other thing about all of that, I uh, many of you know from following this channel that I am uh, a national speaker for an organization called Rachel's Challenge. And uh, I, my full-time busy season is September and October. And it looks like in September I'm going to be out and about. I'm going to be in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm going to be Fayetteville, North Carolina, Fort Worth, Texas, and in Humboldt County, Nevada, as well as Montana City, Montana. So I'm going to be all over the country in September, which means I'm not going to be at home to be able to make gaming videos, at least not on my home PC, which is the good one. So what I'm trying to do with the Patreon page right now is try to raise enough money to be able to get a decent gaming laptop uh, that I'll be able to do these videos from the road when I have a lot of downtime in between events sitting around in my hotel um, that would enable me to do that. So if you support the Patreon page, you'll be directly supporting my ability to continue to make these videos. I'm also going to try to do some videos uh, from historical sites. When I go to Fort Worth, I'm definitely going to be going down to Dealey Plaza. Uh, to shoot some video down at the site of uh, Kennedy's assassination. But enough about all of that. Let's get into Secure River. We have just completed the Battle of Shiloh. Couldn't be more evenly matched. About 20,000 soldiers and 45, 48 guns uh, here on each side. So we're pretty evenly matched. I'm going to count on the fact that I have slightly better weapons. And it's been a while since I've done this battle, but... Honestly, just in looking at it, it's a very small map. So this is one of those maps, if I do well early on, even though we're evenly matched, I feel like I might be able to really do some damage to his army here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right up around here and come at him from the side. I don't want to march up this hill into the face of enemy fire that's concealed in the woods. So the more I can hit him from that side, I think the better off I'll be. Sorry, O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws. You are going to be one of my front-facing guinea pigs here. Um, somebody's got to do it. So I'm going to bring my guns right up here. I'll have my cavalry kind of sitting here ready to pounce on anybody that I can. Okay. So we've only got two hours. This is a really quick battle, so there's not a lot of time to get myself into a good battle position here. Hopefully this is one of those battles where it lets you continue fighting, even when it's complete, but I don't know. I'm just going to start moving them this way, and then I'll adjust accordingly when the time comes. I'll bring the guns right up here. Keep the cavalry close. I don't think I'm going to need supplies for a two-hour battle. So, uh, as I mentioned, oh boy, here we go, we're getting right into it. As I mentioned, naming the brigades is part of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon. You'll see I've got my three um, 
Patreon supporters at that level with their brigades. There's Hampton Legion. That's uh, Meadowhawks Brigade, I believe. Uh, Chris Marciniak, you've got your Paper Collar Brigade. And William O'Hare with the O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws, which at least now they're fighting for the Union. They've been fighting for the Confederacy up until now. So he came out of the woods and came right at me. So we got to back these guys off. I've got gunboats down here. Dang. I was not expecting the Confederates to be this aggressive. Really wasn't expecting that at all. General Grant, get up there. All right, let's try it again. All right, we're going to get O'Hare to hold right there. All right, my plan's the same. I want to get some of these units up around here on his flank. Hair's kind of holding his own. These guys on the left, of course, they're, they're going to take some casualties. Because he's got some big brigades here. But they're going to have to hold on this side in order for me, able, me to be able to get this flank attack going. Which means those two are just going to have to take some casualties. Both facing superior numbers, but they're they're doing all right. Actually, doing pretty well. Especially O'Hare. Of course, he's my only two-star unit so far, so I'm not surprised he's performing well. Plus, he's got slightly better weaponry with those palmettos. Paper collar brigades also two stars. Hampton's Legion probably not far behind. Oh man, look at this. They're gonna come at Kite. I gotta back him off. He's gonna get lit up over there. Alright, now you stay there. Now O'Hare's getting hit in his flank. Okay. Alright, so I expected this with even numbers basically on the battlefield since I'm shifting so much up here to the flank. I knew I was going to be weak on that side and he did try to take advantage of that. Casualty wise, about 800 for me, 2000 for him, so I'm doing alright. So at least now I can kind of get a view of what's back here. That's why I just sent the cavalry back there to scout a little bit. Gladden's getting lit up from the gunboats, the cannon. We're just going to push this line now. I always thought from photos of Braxton Bragg that he, he kind of looked like a friendly grandpa type figure to me. I don't know why. I thought of that just now, but 
whenever I see pictures of him, that's just kind of how he looks. He just looked like he was a nice guy. I don't know if that was the case or not. As opposed to George Gordon Mead on the Union side, who um, was referred to by a lot of the men who served with him as a, uh, I think the term was a goggle-eyed snapping turtle. And he kind of looks like that. I mean, he just looks like he could probably just bite your head off if you got on his bad side. As much as one can tell from how a person looks in a 150-year-old photo. All right, we secured the objective. Now it's just about inflicting casualties. Got about a 1,500-man advantage now. Bring up the guns. Alright, I'm going to hang these guys right here. I don't want to climb up this hill and try to hit him. They'll be exhausted. Wow, look at my gat. 716 kills, 51 deaths. That's called being in the right place. He's at a place where he's been able to cause a lot of casualties, but hasn't been the focus of enemy fire. But honestly, all of these units, wow. And it's just over like that, huh? Uh, all right. Didn't even get to really play through the whole time, but... Uh, so 3,700 inflicted casualties, 1,200 on my side. I really would have liked to have fought that a lot longer because I could have really done some damage to his army there. But uh, I guess we'll take it. Let's go ahead and see where things stand and maybe dive right into the next one. I got a lot of troops and a lot of money right now. We're going to keep going politics for, well, let's see. Are we, yeah. Don't need army organization yet. So the next battle is going to be we're into, uh, we got Rendezvous and then Seven Pines and Gaines Mill. So we're into the uh, peninsula here pretty soon. Um, it's kind of interesting. If you do Seven Pines first, Rendezvous ends up there being less troops. So, okay. So maybe that's the way we go. Even though rendezvous happens first. All right. So let's take a look at Seven Pines real quick. So we're attacking. Or no, we're defending with some additional units. And we only have six brigades on this one. I want you to go fairly easy. So maybe we'll go ahead and fight that one right now. Only six brigades. Hmm. So we'll take these 24 pounders. Let's get a full colonel going here. We'll go all veteran for all these guys. I want to have some good veteran troops to fight some of these smaller battles with. What kind of weaponry do I have? Maybe, okay. Paper collars got 1855s already. How'd they do with those? 
All right, so they had 408 kills and only 33 deaths. Let's see what we've got available. Not a lot. I could buy some Harper's Ferries. They get expensive, though. What about reputation? Springfield 1855s. There we go. Alright. So we got them equipped with those now. O'Hare, you'll be next. You've got Palmetto, so you're good. Six brigades. One, two, three, four, five. And six. Alright. Everybody else? Uh, got to create another division. Everybody else for now, we're going to drop into the second core. Just to make it a little easier. All right, so there's my six brigades, and let's go right into Seven Pines. So we're going to have a nice advantage in men and guns, and we're on the defensive, so this should be fairly simple. We're just coming up to kind of fill in the center. Everybody run! They should have a really high pitched, uh, more of a high pitched yell when the Confederates are attacking like this. Give us a good rebel yell there. So I'm going to let these guys just kind of hang on for dear life because those troops don't matter so much to me. I just need to hold the center. And I've got the men, men to do it with. Now our 24 pounders are going to open up. Hopefully they can get some good shots in. I'll get these units that were already existing on the field. Just get them to kind of hold the flanks. I'll hold the center. and get up there. All right, things have stabilized. Should be pretty easy from here. Most of the casualties that are going to happen here are not going to be my troops anyway. He's going to keep hitting the flanks, which is ideal for me because that means I'm not losing my men. Drop car back a little bit here.
Let's move this side up a little bit. Okay, not much to this one either. I'm not going to worry about resupplying these guns just because I don't really need it. I may advance and just try to cause some more casualties here. Just because I can. Interesting. We have Hampton over here, and then my Hampton's Legion, which of course Hampton's Legion was historically a Confederate unit from South Carolina. advancing with the other units, the, the units that aren't mine as much as I can. O'Hare is about the only one of mine that I'm advancing with in my get. He's got a unit sitting over here, being kind of sneaky with that one. All right, let's finish this up. So none of my units lost more than, let's see, O'Hare, 158 men. That's the most any of my brigades lost. Yeah, yeah, not too worried about this. Okay, we'll finish it up right there.
So again, 2,200 casualties for me, almost 6,000 for him. Nothing much really here. I did capture some Springfields, 1855s. Surprising to me that the Confederates had any of those. All right, so but what this does, most importantly, um, he's getting 4,100 new. So he's still sitting at around 73 to 78,000. The good news is they're not very well equipped, which is going to become more and more of an issue for the Confederates moving forward. But now you see that I have get I get the 2.5% uh, reduction in any enemy army size for rendezvous because I won the Battle of Seven Pines first. So looking ahead to that battle, which I'll do in my next episode, I'm only going to have eight brigades. But he's only got 8,000 men, so that may change a little bit depending on what I do here. But what do I got right now? I've got six in here, so I'm going to drop two more back over there. And we'll use ones that are already maxed out. Go politics one more time. Not yet. So now what I've got here is I've got three, four two-star units that kind of make the core of my force for these smaller battles. Which means they'll be nice and effective. And, of course, that means as well that going into a battle like Rendezvous... I've got a nice advantage again by about 6,000 men. He has no guns coming into that one. So that'll be helpful. Of course, going into a, the next big battle, let's look at that. Gaines Mill. Which, of course, I'll be on the defensive now as the Union. He's got 35,000 men. And I'll, be, I'll definitely have more than that. I've got 24 right now. I'm going to get another 5,200 plus that. That gives me, uh, I'll have about 50,000 facing him at Gaines Mill. Of course, he may get scaled up. But I should have an advantage in manpower at Gaines Mill. And even if he had more men than me, that's a pretty easy one just because I'll be holding the defensive line. So, looking pretty promising so far in the early part of the battle, uh, early part of the war here. But as always, I welcome your input, your comments, your questions, your observations, things you think I might have done differently. Uh, any particular topic in terms of the Civil War that you'd like me to discuss while I'm fighting some of these smaller battles where there's not a lot of action, uh, throw those things out there. And uh, very much appreciate it if you'd hit that thumbs up. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of you who have been subscribing. Uh, not only went over 1500 uh, last night, but have already hit 1510 and kind of moving. So I appreciate very much all of you who have subscribed to this channel. I uh, never thought I'd have that many subscribers in the first seven, eight months of having a YouTube channel. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you want to uh, look into the Patreon thing, I'd greatly appreciate that. Trying to raise the money to be able to get a decent gaming laptop so I can do videos on the road. If not, I'll stick to things that don't require a lot of computing power, and I'll do those on my uh, existing laptop as best I can. Uh, so thanks for watching. Check out some of the other videos. I'll put some links there. And uh, if you're new to this channel, I'll put the link below to the first video in this series. Check out some of those other playlists. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.